Wherever you go, whatever you touch, the whole island of Malta is steeped in history. It's 12 o'clock, 34 degrees. What a lovely day in St. Paul's Bay, Malta. The only people you actually see here on the streets are foreigners or tourists. Maltese people at this time of the day all have their siesta right now. Let me show you a few things that are quintessentially British on this island. They have those double yellow lines to indicate you're not allowed to park here. Most of the signposts are in English or bilingual. People here drive on the left instead of the right. Another symbol of the British heritage are the red phone booths. So when people think about Malta, they think the whole island is just dry and very rocky. Not a lot of green, but then you come to this beautiful Salina Nature Park and you can see that it's actually very green and a really nice spot on a hot and sunny day. The US President John F. Kennedy helped the Maltese people to gain independence from Britain in the 1960s. And in 1964, this place, this monument was erected just a few months after the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And on a hot sunny day, this monument and the surrounding Kennedy Grove are the perfect spot to chill out and relax. Right behind me are the Selina catacombs. Let's go and check it out. What's a bit unfortunate is that you need to walk along the highway when you want to get there. The walk is much longer than I thought. Caution cats crossing. I've seen so many cats in this country. I'm wondering if that's a public road sign or a private one. On the right side of the road, there's a little tavern, but apparently without any people. Maybe they're all sitting inside. And over here, a Belisha beacon. That's what I have only seen in the UK so far and in Hong Kong. And that's the first time I see it in Malta, but apparently there are many more of them. Looks we have almost reached the place. Oh, I'm still not used to the left-hand traffic here in Malta. The Selina catacombs, their graves from the first century AD from the Roman times, not easy to find, hidden between those stone walls. Let's go and find out and check how they look like. Let's walk the small soil track uphill and then I think they're very close. No people there and it's really pleasant at 8 o'clock when the sun has already set over Malta. Not as hot as in the afternoon. Really amazing to imagine that a place like this has been largely untouched for 2000 years. There's no further information no signpost, no coaches with tourists, just those graves with maybe dead bodies inside. Not sure. Wow, it's so dark and moist. So I was told there are bigger catacombs in Valletta and other places of Malta. But here, the Salina catacombs, they are very unique as well and a lot less touristy. And what's also obvious from these catacombs is people in ancient times used to be a lot smaller. So one of the catacombs is actually quite well preserved. Apparently inside you can see some crosses from the early Christians, but 
Unfortunately, it's locked. The catacombs and the adjacent chapel tell us that there used to be a significant Christian population in the first century AD. And behind the chapel, downhill, there is a place where there used to be a harbor.